CataractCoach.com, tiny hyperopic eye and a small pupil, 20 minimum axial length, 34 adapter lens, floppy iris prolapse. Let's look at the calcs here. So you can see the right eye is 20.6 millimeters, the left eye 21.4. So this means that the right eye obviously is more hyperopic, calling for a 34 adapter lens, the left eye calling for a 27 and a half adapter lens. This means this patient has a good high degree of anisometropia, which probably also means amblyopia in this right eye. Once you have more than a few diopters of hyperopic difference between the two eyes, you're going to get amblyopia. So probably amblyopic here in this eye, but the tough part is it's a tiny eye. So there's the paresthesis being made. Looks like the surgeon's sitting superiorly. And let's see what's going on here. So video sped up. Obviously, there's no worries about that. That's common. We do that all the time. And making the main incision here, and looks pretty good. Looks like 2.2 millimeter or microcoaxial. And this is a tough case because this pupil is going to come down. It's going to be a lot smaller. Now, measuring out that rexus, don't make a tiny rexus because remember, this pupil is much smaller than you think. It looks big, but it's probably a, at best a 5 millimeter pupil. So there you go. There's a good rexus, nicely intact. Now, there's no room to prolapse it. Don't try to pull it out of the bag. This is a, a dense nucleus and a very tiny eye, small, shallow anterior chamber. So let's see the technique here. Obviously, a very experienced surgeon. Whoa, a lot of, there you go, a Rosatelli-type spin there. I like it. Let's see the technique. Probably a chop. I'm, it's got to be a chop right off the bat. Yeah, come on. Let's see. Rotate, rotate, rotate. Okay, a lot of rotating. I love it. I love it. Probe going in. Horizontal chop. Very nicely done. So obviously a very experienced surgeon, which is a good thing. Look at the iris already wanting to prolapse out the paracentesis. See, it's kind of peaking the pupil in that direction. And look at the pupil coming down. Look how the dilation is smaller now. So beautiful chop technique, by the way. Very nicely done. This may be even be more than two times speed. Maybe it's like three or four times speed. So we sped the video up, but I just want to show you the challenges of this case. Now, in a patient like this, you're probably going to hopefully put a monovogal lens here, especially in this amblyopic eye. And probably our best goal here is to aim for about a post-op refraction of close to Plano. So removing these pieces here. Now, depending on the degree of anisometropia, you could have a relatively dense amblyopia. It just depends. So more viscoelastic. Oh, smart move. Love the idea of putting more viscoelastic in. Deepens the AC, protects the endothelium, gives you more working room. I like it. Great idea. Now look at that pupil, even tinier pupil. Now the care you have to take here is don't leave any pieces stuck underneath the iris. You saw there's a little buzz of the iris there inferiorly. You can see it. That's okay. That's going to be of no major consequence here. So get these pieces out. But this is a tough, tough case. And now that you've buzzed the iris a little bit, it's going to come down even more. So tough case. These are, I don't enjoy doing these high hyperopic eyes. It's just stressful. So now more viscoelastic, which is a smart move. And then you can see, even where the iris wanted to prolapse out the paracentesis, there is already some atrophy there of the iris. This is a tough, tough case here. So these are probably my least favorite eyes are the ultra-high hyperopes, the very shallow anterior chambers, the tiny eyes, the nanophthalmic eyes. Those are just, just give you stress. So cortex removal here. Looks like a bimanual approach there. And you want to make sure, or maybe coaxial. Do I see a sleeve on there? No, it's coaxial. Look at that. So you want to make sure that you get all this cortex out. So use that chopper, a second instrument, to lift up the iris to make sure you're not going to leave any pieces of lens material behind the iris. With a poor dilation like this, that can happen. Let's talk about lens calcs. Also, not as accurate in these eyes. Really not. Now, shallow AC in a small eye actually is more accurate lens calcs than a normal or deep AC in tiny eye. Why? If you have a normal, let's say, 3 millimeter deep anterior chamber and you got an eye that's a 20 millimeter actual length, that means that eye well is deeper in the eye. And therefore, the diopteric power of it goes way, way up. And the lens calcs become less predictable. So there you go. Look how big that 6 millimeter optic looks in this tiny eye. Again, make sure you get everything out here. Don't leave pieces of, of lens material behind. And so, beautiful result here. This is a stressful case. But the surgeon here did a beautiful job. Tough case, handled very well. Thank you for watching.